Which banana? Uh, hi, uh, my name is Alex. Uh, I work for at and and today I would like to talk about uh, how we use DPDK to control SROV uh, functions of network interfaces. And despite many improvements, uh, software overlay still have in inefficiency for uh, packet processing workloads and high performance network functions in many cases utilize using hardware virtualization like SROV and we believe SROV will be around for some time in the future. Also some of the smart NICs rely of, on SROV as an interface between NIC and, uh, and packet consumers and tenants. Uh, Dynamic policy enforcement uh, needs for resource management and security in multi-tenant NIC environments. So uh, today there is no single policy enforcement which takes on hypervisor-like functions for SRV NICs. Linux tools uh, do not manage dynamic events, those uh, which arrives from virtual function to physical function through, for example, mailbox messages. And also kernel driver don't support enough knobs uh, which needed in real life uh, network topologies. Uh, network interfaces, hardware often have more capabilities than Linux drivers exposed to the users uh, today and I have listed a few things like steering traffic more than one VLAN ID towards a virtual function, collection of statistics, mirroring bomb traffic management, etc. So that's VFD is a some sort of hypervisor for SRV. It's a privileged piece of software which allocates resources, manage policies, configure VFs. And when we start looking, uh, when we started looking on implementing this uh, SRV solution, we find difficulties uh, dealing with the kernel driver. And one example is many environment uh, in our company, and I believe in any large setup. Uh, often runs in the old kernels. And even if we see some improvement in the drivers in the future, uh, next Linux kernel release, upgrading to a new kernel could be a serious undertaken. Uh, it might take uh, lots of effort. So why DPDK? Uh, DPDK is a user space uh, environment, right? So we can build application which easy to deploy in the different uh, Linux versions, distributions, and kernels. It's a more rapid evolution than, uh, than a, a Linux kernel space. Also, SRIV and DPDK, both tools for high performance uh, networking. And so community here understand what's needed better than anybody else. And we have uh, support from major modern NICs where SRV is involved. So VFD, it's a virtual function uh, daemon, is a user process uh, which handles static configuration of the NICs uh, as well as some dynamic events. It's based on the DPDK driver. Uh, we have a little front-end tool which collects statistics uh, per physical port as well as per virtual functions residing in that uh, port. And this picture just describes uh, various configuration files and, uh, and uh, what it does. And also this picture probably not easy to read, but it shows that we can use several VLAN uh, IDs to route traffic to different virtual functions and strip or not to strip uh, VLAN ID if it's needed. And also we implemented QS and it's largely based on uh, data center bridge in QAS, where we have uh, several traffic classes. One queue could be a uh, strict priority queue, the other one uh, weighted uh, queues or fair weighted queues, and we can allocate min and mount, max bandwidth or committed or bursts, whatever those things called per traffic class as well as per virtual function. So in the process of doing that, uh, we ended up uh, having with great help of the DPDK community with private API which are defined in a different 
places doing exactly the same things, and we have APIs for ISGB driver, for I4EE, as well as for uh, Broadcom devices. They look the same, they do exactly the same things, and we <laughs> believe that moving those APIs to some sort of generic API we can, we, we can use to, to manage SROA devices would be helpful for everybody. And the uh, status of this uh, thing, we, we support Niantic, uh, Fort Phil, uh, Broadcom devices, working on supporting QoS for more NICs, adding uh, more tools to support operations and troubleshooting. And uh, in the future, we definitely would like to have generic APIs uh, to collapse those private APIs in one generic. We're working on adding NetLink, CFS, ProcFS, or uh, interfaces to, uh, to interface Linux tools. Also, I believe that having variable number of queues per virtual function is something needed, at least in our environment. One can imagine virtual function one need four queues for QS and virtual function two, 16 RSS queues. Uh, and, and it has to be managed more dynamic, not on the compile time or, or even uh, uh, DPDK build time. And uh, also we believe if we move more complexity of SRV uh, configuration into hypervisor, VF could be less complex uh, and more portable and maybe it will enable us to, to build future NICs uh, like some sort of vertio in the hardware where application could be less dependent on drivers and, 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 and things. And also we're thinking about how to make uh, more standard interfaces for smart NICs uh, to have like VFDF integration points between applications needed uh, SRV uh, and uh, yesterday in the morning we heard some ideas how to uh, at least push uh, software discover capabilities of smart NICs and we believe that cloud platform integrators and we switch router project could benefit from this work and also NIC vendors uh, should contribute to it and we do have uh, great support from from many NIC vendors today. And how can you help? Well, without your help, nothing would be possible, right? All this network virtualization wouldn't be the way it is today. And then this list, not complete list of people who are helping us, lots of AT&T help, Broadcom, and a few folks from at and were working, and many, many more people were doing this work. And I'd like to say thank you, everybody, and I guess if you have any questions now, it's time to ask. Um, so, uh, I think your proposal makes sense. I can see the reason behind. But I remember last year um, here in Dublin, in the meetings, people making clear DPDK is about data plane and not about the control plane. So this is against that uh, position. So I would, like, I would like to ask you and the community here, which is the TPDK position regarding this uh, issue? Are we just saying we are going to do control as well, not just data plane? Uh, because before was, OK, let's do the kernel doing the control plane, so. Uh, I cannot speak for DPDK position, right? It's community things. But I cannot imagine data plane without any control plane, right? And it's from day one, uh, DPDK was handled enabling NICs, doing some things, maybe not exactly complete like we're proposing here. Uh, yeah, I, and, and I understand kernel is a right space to have this functionality, and I would say there's nothing wrong to have it in both places. Yeah, I, it makes sense for me, but I want to know if DBDK is going to, yes, okay, let's do it, and not, no, kernel is going to the control plane. I want to, to know that for sure. Right. I guess 
we've we, we done this, right? <laughs> and uh, whether it's the right place to do or not, that's what uh, I'm here to ask <laughs> DPDK folks, whether it makes sense to do it. In a, uh, I believe that user space application doesn't matter where its right space is. What matters, what is practical. And uh, uh, we try kernel path. And uh, DPDK is kernel bypass tool, and that's how I see it in many cases. Not only for move packets fast, as well as things to have done quicker. Well, I, uh, I think from the uh, DPDK's perspective, yes, it's data plane primarily, but we have to have some controls for managing DPDK while it's running. I mean, we can't just ignore that. So it isn't that we need to add all the controls on the planet to DPDK. We need to add something. And there's certain pieces that need to be managed in that area. At least that's my impression. But, but only control without data? Which is no, no, no. No, he's... I, I don't think he's saying control without data, right? Data is necessary or did directly to the VM. Well, that's, that's one implementation. Uh, yeah, that's... Right? So, from a perspective of DPDK running where it needs to run, it may be running SROV, it may be running VertIO, it may be running something. We need to have some control over it from a, from a control aspect or from an orchestration aspect. So we have to add some. I don't know what those are explicitly, but we need to start looking at it and making it to deal with it. Okay. Uh, so, Alex, Santosh here. Here. So, wanted to uh, quickly ask you about, when you say SROV hypervisor, so what does it model is? Basically, it coexists with the Linux, or it's a Taiwan, or how it In is? the current model, it replaces a kernel driver. And uh, this VFD takes control on the PF and manages all PF as well as virtual functions. There is no kernel driver in, in current implementation. We're thinking to have some kernel pieces to help interface with the IP route tools, if configs or whatever that is, right, through kernel uh, netlinks and CSFS, procfs, all, all those kind of things. But okay. And uh, if I understand correctly, then you have a VFD kind of a concept at user space, which is orchestrated by the users for control pin programming. Is this correct? Right? Yes. Okay. Uh, before deployment of virtual functions, uh, somebody needs to tell virtual function one needs these VLANs, this bomb traffic management. And then today in at and we have OpenStack orchestration. It starts with heat template where the customer supplies necessary information and we have whole end-to-end -end things. But uh, that's right. Everything, all configuration of SRV is done on the host okay. or as much as And uh, I assume like you have a future plan for VFD to support the plugin for those uh, heat and all this external uh, projects which can have a plugin and hook it up and do the programming from the top layer. That, that's Sorry. what we have okay. today in the at and environment. Right? So why a daemon? Because uh, what? I'm here. So why did you implement the daemon? Because to me that's just the IP root and ETH tool that has been re-implemented in the daemon with the right. YAML but inputs. Why a daemon? One more thing to monitor, one more thing to put here. Well, IP tools and kernel driver, the three things or maybe more needs to happen in the kernel. Almost everything exists in the kernel with exception of few things which are needed in real life network applications. And IP link tool needs to add those little knobs, right, to route more than one VLAN to a virtual function. It doesn't exist today. 15 different vendors of drivers we use needs to be adjusted. Kernel structure needs to change. It takes yes. time and effort. My question is, why do you need a, a daemon? Why a daemon? Oh, it doesn't have to be... The, it, could, the, it could have been just, you know... One uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It has to be any, anything, right? Any application which runs in the user space. But it's not just configurable. VLAN. You need to take uh, some mailbox callback events, for example, and, and it's a live application. It's not like configuring, you can forget about that. What happens if uh, VM restarts? It resets some of the unique configurations. You need to make sure things will be reapplied. So, okay, yeah. thanks. 
Um, question here. So first of all, I think it's great that there are more users. We haven't seen many users in this conference, so thanks for that. Uh, secondly, I do agree with many of other people that spoke here that kernel API should be the long-term support for this. Um, the only thing is if we run fast with DPDK and provide APIs which are then not compatible with the kernel, we're going to be in a bad position. I mean, Mellanox provided patches to the Git, a, P a pull request, and basically we're hijacking higher up inside the VFD because the DPDK APIs don't match currently the Linux APIs. So we had to go higher up, add most of the things are in the Linux kernel. Some of them are still in process. So, so we have backports and stuff like that for the Linux kernel. But we just have to make sure the DPDK API, what you said, global API, if it's aligned with the kernel API, then I think it's great. We can easily match this in. Uh, if it's not aligned, we're in a problem. We're right, right. But why we started? Because it was not aligned. Current API do, doesn't have what is needed. That's so, if we had everything, I wouldn't even bother to yeah. do anything, right? Things are there. Yeah, so, so PMD level API is great as an experimental, and once we go generic, we have to make sure there is a wider acceptance and alignment to Linux as well. I agree. Okay, thank you very much, thank you very thank much you. Alex. Um,